Okay, we're going to have a go today at using Scratch to make the opening part of the Hugo Cabaret story. So I've opened Scratch Desktop. I'm going to call this Hugo Cabaret. I'm going to save it somewhere I can find later. So I'm going to go to Save to Your Computer and I'm going to put it into uh, my OneDrive folder, which is hiding up here. There we go. It's already calling it Hugo Cabaret. That's fine. So I'm just going to press Save. Now, before I start this, I'm going to have a quick look at the Hugo Cabaret story. So if we have a look here, we can see that at the beginning of the Hugo Cabaret book, there's a little bit about Hugo. And then, I'm playing this muted so I can talk over it, there's a whole series of pictures which talk about, or rather show the picture of what's happening at the beginning of the book. So we can see the picture of the Earth. And it gets closer. We start to see Paris appear. And then after Paris, we start to see the train station. And it's framed as if it's a camera that is zooming in. So in our Scratch project, we want to do the same thing. So I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to go back to Scratch. And that means that we need to make some backdrops, because the backdrops are where our, kind of, well, where our backdrops are going to be. We don't need Scratch, the cat, so we can actually get rid of him now. I'm going to go to Backdrop, Backdrops up here. And we're going to start with scene. Now we could just start with um, the train station in Paris. I want to start with the earth. So I'm going to start with a circle. We can choose a fill colour. It's quite dark in the book so we can kind of just make it quite a dark colour. Put the circle here. It's a bit more purple than I meant so maybe let's go back onto the fill colour and make that a bit darker. There we go. And we've got the background around it. So again if we look back what that looked like on the book. Just go back a little bit just to show that. You can kind of see a starry, here we go, you know, a starry sky. So we're going to make that quite grey. So again, I'm going to go to fill, but make it a bit brighter than that one. Just bring the brightness up a bit. Maybe take the saturation down. Okay. But it's a bitmap. Okay, that's not again quite what I wanted, so we'll play around with the colour here a bit. See if we can get more like the kind of grey colour I wanted. Mm, grey purple might work okay for this one. And then we could put a few stars in. So we'll go back onto the paintbrush, possibly in the vector option. Take our colours up a lot. We can have a whitish colour and we can kind of add some dots around here to make the sky. And if we go back, well, first of all, let's give this a name. So where it says backdrop one up here, let's call this um, dark sky one. And that's our first one. Now again, if we go back onto the story, after that we can see, can go a little bit back from here. We start with one picture of the earth and then we get a little bit closer. So we can do the same thing on ours. We're gonna have a second picture. So we're going to go back onto here. We're going to create a new backdrop. I'm going to use the same idea. So we're going to go back onto the circle, maybe make the circle a bit bigger. So we're kind of zooming in on it. And we want it to be the same color it was before. So I could choose that from here if I go on to fill. And from the fill options, if I go to color picker, I'm not sure to color pick up that color. So that was 0, 100, 0. So we can do the same thing on here. And then in the background, we do the same thing. So we're going to go back onto the fill color here. We're going to go back to the color picker and we're going to pick this one. Now, again, on here, we should now be able to fill the background. Again, I can't because it's um, a vector, so we need to change that to a bitmap. We can fill that in. The stars are basically just a bright color, so we just take the brightness up. We just pick. Maybe a little bit less uh, pink. Take the saturation down. To put a couple of stars in there. So we've got our opening dark sky. Then we've got a second one, which I'm going to call dark sky 2. So they're logical. I can come back to it. And again, now if we go back onto the picture again, we can see after that we start to see the edges of Paris and then the train station. So we can continue the same theme. We go back onto the backdrop here. 
we can paint on the city scene or we could go straight into the station and make the station a bit bigger so I'm going to click on the building here and make the fill color quite dark again I'm going to kind of make um, doing very well at picking pinkish colors today a bit better if we look at what the train station looked like for shape you can see we've kind of got this big front with the tall kind of sections where the engines would be running in so let's do the same idea here let's kind of uh, make kind of our engine house here be a second one like this. The edges of it looks like they kind of had normal roofs, but a bit lower. So we'll do the same idea. Maybe use the rectangle tool a bit for these ones. Just like the, now we should be able to pull it across a bit. Control C, Control V. I'm going to duplicate it so the two sides are the same. Use the fill code to fill these ones in. Again, it needs to be a bitmap for that, so we're going to do that like that. So we're kind of starting to build up a bit of a scene. We might want to make this a little bit uh, more colourful, put some of the windows in so we could go for a bit of a lighter colour now. Take the brightness up, take the saturation down. Let's use the same kind of idea. So we can make these kind of doorways here. If rather than making them all separate, if I actually use the um, select tool, I can take one. And copy it. So they'll be the same size. And again, on the top of these are a bit more curved. So if I wanted, what I could potentially do is make a bit of a circle. And we use the color picker so it's the same color. We'll just try and make a circle looks a bit like that. And then we'll try and move it so it sits on top of it. And we use Control C and Control V to duplicate those. So I go across a bit like this. If I'd thought about this, I could have done this before. We're starting to get a bit of a darker train station kind of esque building appearing here. We do the same for the top. Let's go back onto the circle bit here. That's not the colour we want. We'll deal with that in a second. Again, using the colour picker to pick the same colour up from here. And then we can fill this one. We we'll use a rectangle of the same colour. into place. Again just like we did before if we go to the selection tool and copy the whole of that control C control V and then we have two top windows a little more or less the same so it's not perfect but it gives the impression of a, uh, of a station and then we can do the same kind of basic idea we'll use the color picker again but this time we'll make the brightness a bit higher and we'll make that into the street My colour choices today are not good. Okay, so we'll take the brightness down a bit, take the saturation down a bit. That's a bit better. And then the background could be a similar idea. Let's make the brightness a bit higher, let's make the saturation a bit lower. Do the same kind of idea. So it stands out, but it's still clearly dark. We could take the saturation right down, the brightness right up if we wanted, and we could put a few um, stars in there so there's a bit of a theme to it. So we've now got a dark sky, a dark sky 2, and this one is going to be our Paris train station. I missed off the background of the whole of Paris. If you want to try and draw that, you can. 
one of the things we could do here is we could right click and duplicate this and we could call this Paris train station 2. If we then select this main building here, control C, control V, we can move it a little bit further forward and we can make it bigger. So we kind of zoom in on it. If we do that, we are going to have to be a little bit careful about these edge bits. So there's a couple of ways we could deal with that. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a rectangle tool. I'm going to go to the color picker and I'm going to pick the background color. And then I'm just going to draw these in like this so that background now matches. We've now got the dark sky. Dark sky 2 it gets bigger, the Paris train station and then the second Paris train station. And now we're ready to add a character. But before we do that, we want to add a little bit of programming. So we're going to go now into the code and we're coding the backdrop, which is OK. We just need to remember that later on. So what we're going to say is that when the event happens, which is when the green click button is pressed, this one here, then we want a whole series of things to happen. The first thing we want to happen is you want to go into the looks and we want to set the backdrop to dark sky one. We want this to be a bit of a delay. So within the control options, there's a wait one second option. Then we're going to go back in. In fact, we're going to just cl click on this one. And do control C and do control V because we want a few of these. Okay, that will speed us up a little bit later on. Then we go back into the switch background, and after a second, we want to change it to Dark Sky 2. If this is too long, you can change this to 2. Sorry, if this is too slow, um, you can change it to 0 0.5. If you want it to be longer, you can change it to 2. Okay, then we're going to wait one second. Then we're going to change this one to Paris train station. Then we're going to wait a second. And then we're going to change it to Paris train station 22, apparently. Hmm, didn't mean to do that. Let's go and have a look at that. Oh, yeah. Press 2 twice. Okay. Anyway, that's resolved now. So now if we press on the green flag, we should see we start on the first scene. And it starts to zoom in. And like I said, if you want to change this, you can make these into 2. So there's more of a delay. Put that one there as well. We could also have more stages, but the book doesn't have lots of stages. It's kind of big jump, so it kind of fits our story quite well. Okay, so we've got a background set up. What we now need is a main character, or rather, we need a main character who can navigate us through the story. So the story is about Hugo Cabaret, and obviously there's various other characters in the story, but this character is more like your narrator. So it could be a picture of you, it could be a picture of something else that you want to use. It probably shouldn't be Hugo, because then they're talking from outside the book. So we're going to use choose a sprite. I'm going to go to paint again. And this time we're going to, go to try and create a character that we want. So the character I want is blue. I choose that blue there. Quite a dark blue. Kind of that colour. And we're going to choose kind of a face like this. And then we're going to give him some ears, although I needed that to be a bit thicker than that, so let's try that again. I want this colour to be the same as this one. There we go, that's better. It's a little bit too big. Try that again. So we go back onto here. We go back onto colour picker, choose the colour. Make the outline a bit thicker. That's better. Then we can go on to fill and we can fill these spaces. Again, it's not bitmap, so we need to change into a bitmap first. Okay, and if you've guessed, the character I'm trying to make is this one. So we now need some straight eyes. So we're going to go back onto here. But this time we want the saturation to be quite big because we basically want them to look like that. He's got a very wide mouth, 
So we're going to give them a very wide mouth. I'm going to use a paintbrush for this next bit. His teeth are mostly at the top, so we can kind of just use a rectangle for that one, or for the most part. So you can take the saturation right down, the brightness right up. And we're going to use the rectangle to just make kind of a, a big block of white teeth across there. So this is Lushkin's teeth. We could go back over with the paintbrush to replace some of the black I've just accidentally rubbed off there to make it look a bit better. A bit less like he's got a square mouth. Okay, we could also zoom in here to give us a little bit more control on here. I'm not going to worry about the fact that Lushkin's huge here at the moment. We can change that later. Okay, he's also got a fairly straightforward kind of cattish body, so we're just going to go down, create what's almost a rectangle with a white tummy. So we'll do that. We want the same colour as we had before, so we can go back on to fill and pick out this one. And then we're going to draw the body so it comes kind of down like this, comes across, goes back up. It's got a white tummy, so we do the same thing. We're going to use the fill, so the outside's like that. And so the inside, again, just take the saturation right down, the brightness right up, looks like that, because otherwise it's hollow. If you noticed before, you can see through the Lushkin, and we don't want to see through Lushkin. And now we just want to give him some arms and some feet. To make the feet fairly simple, I'm mostly going to do a circle. I'm going to take his normal colour here, but I'm going to make it very slightly darker, just so the feet are a little bit easier to see. Maybe a little bit darker than that. Again, I'm going to copy those and paste them so the two feet match. And then using the free tool, I'm going to make it match the feet. I'm just going to give him some arms. I'm sure you guys can do a better job than this, but this gives me an introductory character. Now he's too big and he doesn't have a name, so let's give him a name. So we're going to call him uh, Lushkin. His size is too large, but we're going to change that here. So I'm going to take it down to about 50 and press enter. And then Lushkin can start here. It's still quite big. Let's so take it down to maybe 25. That's better. Okay. So we've got the backdrop. Now we've got the main character. So we want to program him. We can actually say that he's facing forward here. So in our code, we're now coding Lushkin, not the backdrop. Now the backdrop changes for two, four, six, eight seconds. So we want Lushkin not to be visible for the first eight seconds. So we're going to say events. When the green button's clicked, we want Lushkin to be hidden. We want it to wait eight seconds. And then we want Lushkin to show. So if we press play now, it runs through the sequence from the book. And just as that finishes, Lushkin appears. Now Lushkin isn't appearing in a set position, so we want to change that as well. So we want to go into motion. We want to put him where we want him to start, somewhere that's on the ground here or here. You'll see those numbers there change. Watch if I move them again, those will change and update. So we're going to put him in a starting position. We're then going to pull this in, which means that if he started somewhere else by mistake, we press green, it will run through the story, and then he will appear in the right place. And then we want him to make a bit of an entrance. So yours might not be Lushkin, but we still want him to move. So I'm going to just pull him across to where I want him to go before he speaks, which is there. And I'm going to use the glide option. But I'm going to say two seconds. It should make him slide across. And then when he gets there, I want him to introduce us to the book. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go into the looks option. I'm going to say, say hello for two seconds. But I'm going to say... Welcome to the story of Hugo Cabret. And then we can move him slightly further, just so you're not just sat watching a blank screen or a non-moving screen. 
and we go back into motion I'm going to say glide to the new position and we're going to have another look so I'm going to say I am your narrator Lushkin. Obviously if you've chosen a different character change the writing to match it. And we haven't really started much of the story yet but we've set it up so we've got a backdrop, we've got uh, a whole set of coding about it changing with relation to time. We've then added a narrator and the narrator's introduced him to the story. So let's see if this works. Here comes Lushkin. Welcome to the story of Hugo Cabaret. I am your narrator, Lushkin. Okay, and that's where I'm going to stop for today. In the next section, we're going to have to look at how this story moves on, where he goes into the railway shop, or railway station, sorry, where we see the shop within the railway station, and where we meet our main characters, but that can come next time. For now, we're going to go to File and Save to your computer. We've already named it, so we're just going to press Save again. We'll say, do you want to replace it? We say yes. And then we can just close and we are finished for now.